There might be times when you feel that you are losing your salvation. There might be times when the world will press hard on you. Sometimes you think because you have made a mistake or maybe you have sinned and you think that God has forgotten about you. Sometimes you pray and pray and pray and look like this, no answer. You see, life can be discouraging sometimes. And in this video, I'm going to encourage you through the word that you never give up. Even if you have made a very bad mistake in your life, all you need to do is repent and ask God for forgiveness and continue to move on. Let me share with you John chapter 5 verse 24, why you need to be born again the Bible way. Because there are so many benefits attached to being born again the Bible way. The new birth is a reality and it comes with many inheritance that God has packaged for you. Let us look at John chapter 5 and verse 24. John chapter 5 verse 24. It says, Verily, verily, this is Jesus speaking. Verily, verily, I say unto you. So when Jesus is saying verily, verily, you need to pay attention. He said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Wow, wow. Remarkable declaration by Almighty God. Jesus is saying right here that anyone that hears his word, anyone that hears his gospel, anyone that hears the word, and not only that, but believe on him, believe on God, hath everlasting life. When you look at that word, hath everlasting life, it is a past test. It is already done. It is a done deal. You have everlasting life once you are born again. It's not called a temporary life. It's not called a human life. It's called everlasting life. There's a transition when you got born again, the Bible way, from the ordinary life into everlasting life. That's why it's good for you to hear the right gospel. Because when you believe on the right gospel and you believe on Jesus, you automatically have everlasting life. It's not a work in progress. It's automatically. You have it. It is done. It's permanent. You don't lose everlasting life. That is what the Bible teaches. I know some people say that uh, you can lose your salvation. You can lose uh, the Holy Spirit. But that is not what the Bible says. The Bible says you have it. It now says you shall not come into condemnation. The only person that can condemn you is you or the devil. But Jesus said he would not condemn you. It's right there. He said, now you have passed from death unto life. You have passed from death unto life. We have passed from spiritual death unto spiritual life. Glory to God. It is everlasting. So no matter what you're going through, no matter the disappointment in life, encourage yourself through the word that you have everlasting life. Maybe people don't like you. Maybe your people are against you because of you believe on Jesus. Maybe your family is against you, your friends against you. Maybe your husband is against you or your wife is against you when you got saved. Encourage yourself through the world. You have everlasting life. You have something that is super valuable. Something that cannot be taken away from you. And the devil knows it. Let's take it one step further. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. 1 John chapter 5 verse 13. He said, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. What a glorious inheritance. Apostle John wrote this to the believers back in, his, in the Bible days to encourage them because it, they were going through so, many, so much suffering. They were going through so much pain, so much disappointment. So much, sometimes they feel condemned. Even um, the, the unbelievers were telling them that you don't have the good thing because the unbeliever seems to be prospering. Unbelievers seems to be having uh, all the goodies. But John is reminding us. It's reminding everyone through first John chapter 5, verse 13. He said, I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. He didn't write it to everybody, it's only to those who believe in the name of the Son of God. It now said that you may know that you have eternal life. That you have eternal life. You have it. It didn't say that you may pray to have eternal life. It didn't say to fast to get eternal life. It didn't say to give dangerously 
to have eternal life. He didn't say if you don't pay tight, you don't have eternal life. He said that you may know that you have it. Oh, glory to God. That word know, the Greek word that was translated to know is idol. That means to be aware, always aware. No matter where you find yourself, no matter the disappointment, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance that come against you, be aware that you have, you have, you have eternal life. No matter your thoughts, no matter, you know, your mistakes, your past mistakes, glory to God. Your past doesn't define your future because you have, you have, you possess eternal life. Ah, you now say, and you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. To believe means to keep declaring I have eternal life. I believe on Jesus. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. See, to believe means you have to voice it out too, privately or publicly. Glory to God. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. I always say it. <laughs> Real men love Jesus. Real women love Jesus. And you're loving Jesus is when you speak it out, when you declare it, and when you act it, privately or publicly. Let's look at one of those inheritance in our salvation on eternal life number one we have righteousness we have god's righteousness it's done deal in second corinthians chapter 5 i read verse 21 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 25 very remarkable this is what puts you over on believers it says for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in christ jesus Oh, God has already made Jesus to be sin for us. He has passed it. It is done. When you get born again, you enjoy this inheritance. You don't need to pray to be righteous. You don't need to try to act righteous. You don't need to act, not in, don't need to act as if you are righteous in your own righteousness. Your righteousness is like a fitting right. But when you are born again, oh glory to God, when you have everlasting life, you are automatically made righteous. And which righteousness are we talking about? He said. In Second Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty-one, as I begin to run up, for He had made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus did no sin, but Jesus became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's the righteousness of God. Jesus gave us His righteousness. So when you are born again, God's righteousness is all yours, totally yours. That is what the Bible teaches. The religious people find it difficult to uh, accept this, but when you know this, you don't need to be running from one prophet to the other. When you know this, you don't need to be running everywhere. Asking people to pray for you because God's righteousness is inside of you. God's righteousness makes you to stand right with God. It gives you right standing with God. It makes you a master over circumstances of life, no matter what. Glory to God. I don't know about you. It's very lovely to be born again. It's the best thing to know Jesus. You can never lose. It's either you win or you win. You know, the new man is Christ. It's automatically made righteous. You are automatically made righteous. Why? Because he already done it. Jesus already done. Jesus already died on the cross. He shed his blood. So when you come into God, when you come to God through Jesus Christ, automatically Jesus gives you his own righteousness. What could be better than that? Glory to God. So understand that once you are born again, you're, 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 you're be believing on Jesus and having eternal life is permanent. You don't lose it. The Bible didn't say you will lose eternal life. He said you have it, that you may come to believe that you have eternal life. And if you're watching me right now, you don't know Jesus, you are missing out. The purpose of our preaching, the purpose of our video is to create that awareness that Jesus is the only way to God. And you might be asking me today, say, Brother Ambrose, how do I get born again? How do I enjoy this benefit? All you need to do is believe that Jesus died on the cross for all of your sins, past, present, and future sins. He, he shed his blood. He was buried. He raised himself from the dead. Now he's in heaven. Oh, glory to God. If you can believe that what he did, the blood that he shed on the cross is enough for you, for your salvation. The Bible says eternal life is yours. So you can get born again right now by just believing that Jesus died on the cross. It's as simple as God has made it so simple. So I encourage you to come to Jesus today. Get born again and get this eternal life. And you will see the glory of God manifest in your life. Glory to God. I'll see you again in another video.